Welcome to this Giftworks video. In this video, I want to show you some of the different options that you have to send email using Giftworks. There are three areas that you can send email through Giftworks. The first, first is in Smart Lists. When you're viewing a Smart List, on the left-hand side, you can click on Export and say Send as Email. This will allow you to send this uh, Smart List as an Excel file or an X XML file or a CSV file. And you can send it right through email to a recipient. You can also, under Reports, produce a report. And on the left-hand side, under the Export menu, you can say Send as Email as well. And just like a Smart List, you can send this report specifically as a PDF. Other reports you can send as Excel files and, and so on. The last place you can send email is probably the most obvious and the most used, which will be the mailing section. So if you're going to send out some welcome letters, you can choose to send it by email versus printing them out. Well, in Giftworks 2012, we added a new feature of sending out emails or a new capability. Before that, the only way you were able to send emails, and that's using Giftworks 2011 or 10 or 8 or 6, the only way you were able to send out emails is if you had Microsoft Outlook installed on your computer. And for many people, they didn't use Microsoft Outlook. And as the years have gone by, many people have switched to um, online email like Gmail, Hotmail, and so on. And using Outlook uh, was um, not an option for everybody. And so we've added the capability of sending email now using your own outgoing uh, mail server, or otherwise known as an SMTP server. And I want to show you a little bit of how to configure that. So I'm in the mailing section right now, and you'll see a new option. And keep in mind, this is only available in Giftworks 2012 and newer. Um, and uh, you'll see the option of send email. And you have a configure link out here. Now, the first time you set it up, it's going to give you the option of choosing either Outlook or your own email server settings. Depending on your configuration, even if you have Microsoft Outlook, you may choose to use your own email server settings. For many people, that's a, that's a better choice, and there, there's not a dependency on having Outlook, Microsoft Outlook installed on your computer. Let me just run through both of these real quick, to, just to let you know how you can use both. First is send email through Microsoft Outlook. As long as you have Microsoft Outlook and installed and configured on your computer, then you should simply be able to uh, say send email through Microsoft Outlook, click on Next, and put in a to email address, a recipient. This is, run, this is gonna run a quick test. I'm just going to put in my email address. Now keep in mind, if you're using Microsoft Outlook connected through Microsoft Exchange, you're going to want to make sure your from email is your actually authorized Microsoft Exchange email address, or you will get a warning or an error from Giftworks saying uh, that you need to change the from email address. And this is for security purposes. I'm just going to say that's whose email I'm using. And I'm going to say send test email. And sorry, I need to change this. And that's actually the warning you'll get. If you're using Exchange, Microsoft Exchange and didn't use the proper email address, Giftworks will give you a message saying such. So I'm going to just change this to missionresearch.com. Click on Send Test Email. And now you'll see the message was sent successfully. Now Steve, uh, the steve.faithful at Giftworks Connect email address, should receive a message a test message from Giftworks, and that's all you need to do. Keep in mind, if you're using Microsoft Outlook, Giftworks uh, is only compatible with 32-bit versions of Microsoft Outlook. If you're using a 64-bit version of, Gift of uh, Microsoft Outlook, Giftworks will not be able to, to, to work with that. So keep that in mind if you're going to choose Microsoft Outlook. Some of the benefits of using Microsoft Outlook are that um, it will end up, uh, when, when you have a lot of email messages that are going out, it will uh, Microsoft Outlook will queue those messages or store those messages up and send them over time. Uh, so Microsoft Outlook will handle kind of the sending of all those emails. And that's good, especially if you have a, a number of emails that you want to send out. Get Outlook can handle all that queuing. They'll all go into your uh, drafts folder and then into your outbox in, in Microsoft Outlook and then be sent out. Keep in mind, as with any um, uh, SMTP provider or mail provider, there's probably going to be some limit on the number of outgoing emails that you're going to be able to send per day. And that's whether you're using Microsoft Outlook or your own uh, mail server, there's going to be a limit. If you're using uh, Comcast or Verizon or Gmail, um, there's going to be limits. So whether you're using Outlook or you're using direct to your own mail server, there's going to be limits. Keep that in mind as you consider sending out email. Also keep in mind that this functionality within Giftworks is not a replacement for something like constant contact or eye contact, uh, vertical response, and so on. Uh, those are services that are specifically designed of sending very high volumes of emails out 
So keep those in mind. So we've just successfully configured Outlook, but some of you may not want to use Outlook because you don't have it or you don't want to use it. And so you can simply click on the configure link and click on send email using your own email server settings. Now, you'll want to make sure that you get these email settings uh, in advance so that because when I click the next button, it's going to ask me for a number of settings. And those settings are going, to, are going to include both the server address, the server port, whether or not the server requires an encrypted connection, um, whether it requires authentication as well. So in this case, I'm using Gmail. And so this is the Gmail information I'm going to provide. Now you can always, uh, you can either find them out for, if you have a, your own mail server in-house, you'll want to check that out through your IT department or the person who manages your mail server. If you're using Hotmail or Gmail, there are certainly, you can do a quick Google search to find, um, to find the settings that are appropriate for your email provider. Um, and most email providers will give you this information. Uh, and we'll make it available to you. And so once you get that information, uh, you're going to want to put it in here. Uh, once again, the server name, the server port, different options we uh, regarding SSL connections or encrypted connections and outgoing server, authentication, and then providing the authentication information. Once I put that in, I can click on Next, and I'm going to put a to email. So I'm going to send a test to myself in this case. Now, I happen to be using Google which or Gmail, which uh, is not that particular about the from email address. It actually, uh, in the case of Gmail, it will actually disregard this information and use uh, use your own from address. So I'm just going to put my own in anyway. And I'm going to click on Send Test Email. And if everything goes good, it'll say the message was sent successfully. Now I'm going to wait a second, see if I can show you this email that just came in. So it's being sent. Now one of the benefits in this, in my case of Gmail, is it actually stores the messages in my out or in my sent items. Not all email providers will do that. Um, some email servers or email providers will not save the sent email in your uh, sent box. So keep that in mind as you consider. Is for some people, when they're using Outlook, they'll need that functionality, meaning they want to make sure they see all the sent mail. Um, so if you're going to change over to using your uh, an outgoing SMTP server, you'll want to maybe consider something like Gmail or others that, uh, that will store that information. Others will simply not track that, and uh, you will not see your sent messages. So I'm going to go over to my email real quick, see if I can see it. There we go. I'm going to bring it up real quick bring it up for you. You can see it right there. So it's a very simple uh, message that was sent that's saying this is a test email using SMTP from Giftworks. Uh, so that's my test email that came in. Great. I'm all set to go now. Click on finish. And now I'm ready to send email using my own outgoing ser mail server or SMTP server. Uh, keep in mind some things about sending email using this versus Outlook. Because Outlook is installed on your computer, and like I mentioned earlier, it queues your information or it stores it up to then send it out, it's going to be a little bit quicker sending it to Outlook than it would be sending email to an outgoing mail server. If GIFWorks, if you send email using this outgoing mail server, it's going to have to send the, the, the emails one at a time to that server to be sent out. Especially if you're considering sending out emails with large graphics, it could take some time to be able to do that. So keep that in mind as you consider the different options of sending out. But I want to show you one more thing as well because uh, for many of you, you may want some additional tracking or some uh, additional, um, I guess I'll call it mail tracking or mail, uh, mail metrics or uh, open rates and things like that regarding your emails. And I want to show you one little, it's not a trick, but it's a, certainly a way that you can use this to its full potential. For those of you who either maybe you're using Gmail or Hotmail, um, like I said, there's daily limits on those. And that's also for whether you're using Outlook as well. Many, many email providers will have daily limits. Um, and that may not be sufficient for you. Some, for some, it's like 100 a, a day. Others, it might be 500 a day. Some, it might be a certain amount in a certain period of time. So you'll want to understand those limits. But there's, a, there's some services out there that I wanted to show you real quick that can help you do this. And I'm going to sh also show you how you can set it up. So I'm going to bring up a service that we use, and it's called SendGrid.com. Um, SendGrid is just a service that's out there. It's a transactional email provider. And what they do is they allow, they become effectively your outgoing mail server for you. And this is different than like a constant contact or an eye contact that are more campaign based emails, uh, email providers. This is a transactional email provider. SendGrid.com uh, SendGrid is a, um, a good service. We use them 
uh, for our company as well. And uh, we have had some great success with them. I wanted to show you some things that you can do. You'll notice that right now it shows you the kind of counts and different tracking that you can do. And we can look at some t statistics in a moment. But right now you'll see that it's saying, I'm going to refresh this real quick. So it says that it, I've sent eight emails today. I'm going to go back to Giftworks and I'm going to actually configure Giftworks to work with this service rather than perhaps my own email provider. And so I'm going to go back to Giftworks and we're going to configure this and I'm going to use send email using your own email server settings and I'm going to use smtp.sendgrid.net and I'm going to choose that choose this I'm going to put in my send grid information click on next I'm going to do a quick test I'm going to just say Steve at Um, I'll just say from that faithful app. Actually, I'll just say test at test.com. Click on send. It's going to submit it, and hopefully, I'm going to get it in my email here in just a second. Let me, there we go. Back to my inbox. Great. So, I'm going to see this email just came in. Let me bring it up on my screen for you. And so, this one actually used the from address that I send. Uh, but you'll notice it says send via sendgrid.info and it sent it to me and it did the test. Now one of the great parts is if I go over now I'm ready to start sending through SendGrid. Some of the benefits that I get is I'm going to refresh this real quick. And th sometimes the t statistics take a couple minutes to come in. But the great part is if I go under statistics I can actually see things like uh, the number of bounces, the number of spam reports, number of repeat bounces, invalid emails, which how many were delivered and so on and so forth. If I go my, under my email reports, I can see actually specific things and specific errors about why it couldn't send specific emails. So you can also use it to kind of not only track the outgoing email that you want to send, but also track, check to make sure that you have some valid addresses and things like that. So keep those things in mind as you look at different services. There's a number of different services that are out there uh, that you can use, transactional email services. And under configure, there is this link up here to read more about your email options, which will actually bring up a website that we've created a, an article to help you better understand some of your options. And so uh, keep that in mind uh, with, as you're looking at different email options. So that's a different way that you can uh, send email. I'm going to go ahead real quick and just um, set this up. I'm going to send out a quick mailing just to show you it all in action. I'm going to choose my recipients and I'm just going to send one. These are all test. These other ones are test. So I'm going to make sure go through, select my letter, generate my mailing, click on generate. I could send a test email as well. And But I'm going to now, under my uh, email, I'm going to just say send email now. You'll notice that Giftworks is going to give you a, a status. I'm going to send the email now, make sure I have my information in there, click on send. Now it's going to submit it. And it says, it says it was sent. Now I'm going to check my email once again. That's how I send a mailing, whether it was one or a hundred or a thousand. I could go ahead and do that. I'm going to go over to my mail, make sure See if I get this into my mail right now. And actually, my email address might not have been correct. So let me just check that again. Uh, oh, yes. Let me just correct my email address. We'll run that one more time. Let's go over back to donors. I'm just going to correct my email address. We actually should see a failure show up in my send grid. I'm just going to put in Steve at my proper one. GiftFirstConnect.com, click on save, go back over to my mailings, send it once again, go to my recipients, I'm going to just uncheck everybody else and just check me, click on next, next, generate my mail, and then go ahead and click on send now, great, and it was sent, check my email, and there it comes in. I'll see this email. Let me show it up for you. Great. So we see that come in, addressed to me. There's my letter, so on and so forth. Uh, so you see how I can use that uh, to send uh, email out, whether I'm using Microsoft Outlook or I'm using my own SMTP or outgoing mail server, or I'm using a transactional mail service, which can help me do some more analytics and some more measurement of my mailings and my success. Let me go back actually to my dashboard, see back at my send grid. There we go. I have nine emails sent today. Um, I can go ahead and look. 
to see if there's any, any failures. I know some other failures will come in soon, that bad email that I did a moment ago. So we'll probably see that at some point come through. So uh, I hope that information is helpful as you uh, go yourself and send email out of GiftWorks, whether you're using, like I said, Outlook, an outgoing mail server, or even a transactional mail service, something like SendGrid. So thanks for taking time to watch this video, and I wish you the best in using GiftWorks. Bye-bye.